John Barfield. I'm National Director of Personal Philanthropy for DAV. We're located at headquarters in Cold Spring, Kentucky. And uh, we're glad you're here, and we appreciate you coming out. And uh, for our saying a word, I do want to say thank you to everybody here for your service to our country and for doing what you did, because I really do appreciate it. It's kept us safe and it's kept us free, so I don't take it lightly. So thank you very much. Well, we're grateful for your work, and today we're talking about dreaming beyond this world. Leave a legacy of love and care for veterans. So, said, my name is John Barfield. I'm National Personal Philanthropy Director, and my colleague here today is Judy Liss Sweeney. And Judy is also in my department in uh, the Personal Philanthropy Program. Judy and I are going to present this uh, workshop to you today, and I hope you find it informative and helpful and uh, intriguing and questions may come to us and that's fine too. We love, we love to take questions and have a discussion about this. But uh, we're friendly ordinary people who want to hear from you and your family and friends. We listen to our supporters for life stories, learn why they care, and we help them realize their charitable dreams, large or small. We also educate concerning special and tax-wise gifts during one's lifetime. So all those things, we'll talk about those things today. <coughs> The uh, DAV Personal Philanthropy Program covers the entire country. It's a brand new program that we started within the fundraising department of DAV. So these are the states that we're covering, and as you can see, we're, uh, we're divided by regions, and so you find your state and you find your region as to where we are. And our, our goal is to, and within each region, region, have a Personal Philanthropy Program's regional director that's there to help you with any questions. And they can help with questions regarding the uh, state giving that we're talking about today, or current giving, or really anything, uh, we're there to help and to be the point person if you need any assistance at all. Some DAV issues that happen to do with the, the philanthropy of the organization. So always be feel, feel free to uh, call on us. Uh, these are our pictures. Uh, as you can see, we have the southeast, the northeast, the west, the north central, and the central cover. And I'll go back up to the screen and show you. We've got the, the, uh, south, the southeast down there in the light blue, the northeast up in the dark blue, the central is in the yellow, the purple, Texas and those states, uh, we're about to hire somebody there. The red states is the north central, which we have someone there, and we have somebody out west, and eventually that territory is going to be divided into two portions. We want to try to be as available. We are building our program, so it'll take a little while, but uh, at this point, there are those folks that are in these areas for you to, uh, to access if you need. We can get their contact information. A lot of times we publish it in the magazine. We'll publish contacts uh, in various ways. But we're happy to provide that to you. I want to set some expectations for today's session. Um, we're not going to cover intricacies of planning your estate today because that's a personal issue and there's too many things that we would be able to talk about or even cover within an hour. Uh, what we are going to do, though, is we're going to cover simple ways that you can leave a lasting legacy of love and care for your fellow veterans through your estate. We're going to talk about ways that you can give. This is a costume thing today. We're going to talk about ways that you can give that actually provide you with a lifetime income. And we're going to talk about something that I think Judy is going to 15 minute estate gift. Thank you, Judy. And of course, we're glad to answer questions. During the way, anytime you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll be able to help you out. But in the interest of time, if uh, there's anything that's a little bit too intricate, then uh, obviously we'll, we can talk afterwards because, again, these are personal issues and uh, some things are, are best kept just to the personal level. And plus, they may be too detailed uh, in the interest of time to give an adequate answer. But we're here to help. So for now, uh, I just wanted to kind of set the expectations and to establish those things and to introduce ourselves. But at this point, I want to turn it over to Judy Liz Sweeney, who's going to talk to us about some other things. Thanks so much again for coming. Um, you will know us by our ads in the DAV magazine. You all received the DAV magazine, I'm sure you're all members. So, uh, starting about 15, 16 years ago, we were able to get one page in the magazine as our most economical way of talking to our veteran members and family members about including us in their estate plans. So every time you get a DAV magazine in the mail, you see one of our articles. These are two different articles you see here that were recent. 
There are always very heartfelt articles. The very people who name us in their estate plans in one way or another, they always say the most amazing and nearly poetic things about why they did. So they practically write the story when they talk to us and we hear you know, the beautiful things as to why they're doing it. And anytime somebody includes us in their estate plans, they're truly making us part of their family and we really try to acknowledge that and take that into you know, our own approach to them because uh, it's just so personal and meaningful to name a charity and you know, we're, sometimes we even tell them they're adopting veterans as part of their plan. So um, uh, this is an example of a gift annuity article on the left and you'll see the rate chart. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, but gift annuities are the second most common planned gift. That's the industry term for gifts that will benefit a charity after their lifetime. The most common is a bequest, which was the case with the article on the right. Um, and uh, we also rotate, usually about once a year, we'll have a gift on how to make stock gifts. Um, and planned gifts are really any gift that it takes planning to do outside of writing a check. And so they're typically larger and it takes a little thinking and gets wrapped into people's financial situation a bit too. But, um, when you see those articles, they'll also have a postcard reply inside. Uh, we always want you to call, but if you would rather send a postcard reply, then we receive those and send a package back out in the mail and we'll show you. It's on your chair actually for the estate giving side. So now back to John. There's some simple ways to uh, to support the EV, and this is leaving like lasting legacies uh, after after you're gone, after we're gone. And uh, at this point, uh, the quest giving is a substantial, uh, and and estate giving is a substantial level of support. Provides a substantial level of support for our organizations. It's very very important. And there's simple ways to give. We can give through wills or trusts that you might have in your estates already. Some people will give through financial or investment accounts. In other words, uh, just simply saying that uh, when I'm gone, the whatever's left in this account, maybe a bank account, another financial account, will go directly to DAV. And that's a very simple way to do things. Very simple. Uh, you can, insurance policies or retirement accounts are great ways to give. Uh, insurance policies, we can be named the beneficiary. Maybe there's an insurance policy that's paid up and uh, you might not need that, or maybe nobody in your family needs that, and maybe that would be a great way to leave, uh, when you're gone, leave a great legacy. Our retirement accounts, a lot of people have uh, required minimum distributions, but they may not need that income, and so those, uh, those RMDs can be rolled over to DAV, and uh, it wouldn't cost you any tax problems by not taking those, but it gives you the satisfaction of knowing you did something great for disabled American veterans. So, we love that. You always need to make sure you're using the legal name uh, and address for DAV, which is DAV Disabled American Veterans, PO Box 14301, Cincinnati, Ohio 45250. And our tax ID number is 31-0263158. So I believe that information is available in the packets that we have for you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's there. So, but those are key things, especially the address, because if you want to do something for this organization and the address is wrong or something wrong, it costs some problems and uh, later on. So we always want to make sure we're using the right uh, legal name and the right tax ID number on your documentation. Judy? Right. Uh, I will say people do the most amazing things through their estate plans and we always want to thank and honor them. I'll talk about that in a minute. Our Guardian Society is our way of thanking people during their lifetime for gifts that will benefit from later. Uh, but the beauty of estate gifts is that they cost you nothing now. Everybody needs to worry about how much they'll need for their long-term care, etc. Some people know that they have more that they can use and maybe uh, they're not sure that they need to leave as much to their children if they have children. Uh, but people usually have more than they realize they have in the way of assets, so a lot of people think they don't have an estate, but they really do. Um, and 
we like to think of the fact that almost everybody can think about including an estate gift in their plans, but not, any, not everybody for sure can make a larger gift like they might like to during their lifetime. Uh, but the very people who often name us in their estate plans are people who are making $10 gifts, $15 gifts, but maybe a number of them over time and over a lot of years. Um, and of course, we make sure we don't overlook the spouses or the women who are asking us about this because very often they're the ones who end up inheriting and having the assets at the end. Um, but we want you to know we're so grateful for anything you or any of your chapter members might do. You'll end up being ambassadors for us and um, just be a little conversant if you can on ways people can remember us. And, um, and we'll never trail people for their gifts. You know, we definitely will thank them and honor them, but we know people's plans change over time. We know they run out of money and all of that we understand, but we like to play it on the positive side and just make sure we're thanking people during their lifetime. Uh, and then this gives an idea. I actually started at DV in 1995, so I've been here 24 years. And when uh, I started, we were just really starting the plan giving program then, and we were receiving about a million per year, but it has grown and grown and grown. And we started getting into really high numbers in the last five, eight years. Um, nationally, estate giving is about 8% of what all charities receive. Uh, but for us, with our net income, what we actually net from our fundraising activities, it's you know, above one third of our net income in recent years, really the last five plus years at least. And um, so you can see some of the things I'm referring to there on the right hand margin. Um, and I, uh, one interesting thing to know, and you can see some, just some statistics here from Giving USA, it's an industry journal that compiles data nationwide each year on what Americans give, but most giving comes from individuals. I know you hear a lot about corporations, including at the DAV convention, but nationwide corporations are really just getting only about 5% of all philanthropic dollars. It's individuals. 70% of all giving is from people during their lifetime, plus nationwide about another 9% from people through their bequests. And then when you get down to foundations, some of them are really giving from family foundations as well, individuals. So all in all, it's important to know that most giving really comes from people. And uh, this is a breakout of the net revenue for DEV and how much bequest income is as a portion of that pie. Um, at the top are our newer programs for raising money that are kind of in their more infancy and will definitely be growing a lot over time. Uh, John's in charge of major gifts. Uh, we're building corporations, um, building foundation support, and digital sources are you know, largely the emails or other things you're seeing from DAV to encourage giving. And our car donation program I'm a big fan of. It's a newer program. Uh, but uh, they come to you to pick up your car and make it super easy. Everybody loves it, who we've talked to about it from our fundraising table out there the last couple of days. Uh, only for about a year and a half we've had it, but it's a really great nationwide program. And on average, those cars are selling for $2,000, and it's a really fast, fast, um, quickly increasing revenue stream for us. I want to emphasize that the average person who includes us, they're making gifts that are large in relationship to what they gave us during their lifetime. Maybe 60,000 is almost average. A whole lot of people give us 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 for their estate plans only because they end up with far more than they probably realize. They, they're outliving their need for their assets for long-term care and then they end up with more than they realized they needed. That's the case a lot. But, some people are curious what our largest bequest was ever, and it was from uh, this woman and her husband. And uh, they created a charitable remainder trust, which is a way of moving your assets to a trust, especially if you have too much of one stock, and it's too, you know, kind of skewing your portfolio. So this woman's dad had actually started UPS. And so in 1992, they created a charitable remainder trust that paid them an income for life, 
and then when her husband passed away, we didn't have a picture of him, but we could find her picture. Um, eight charities, including the deity, received 31 million each. The deity charitable service trust, actually. Uh, but mostly the people who do this are just ordinary people like you. And um, I wanted to ask, is Mike Silka in the room? We have a national service officer who was hoping to make it to the seminar so that we could have him make some comments as to why he included him as well, but he's, I think he's forgotten, because I haven't met him yet during convention. Uh, but we do have uh, at least one person in the room who could raise his hand to just indicate he's named us in his estate plans. Correct, would you mind? Yes. And has anybody else in the room named us? And you can talk to us later, you don't have to say, but just want to acknowledge you if you have. So, and Hello, everyone. This is somebody who's My name is Kevin Swartzberg, E U R K N O E, Air Force retired and Vietnam veteran. I wanted to share with you the reason why I created this video. My wife and I created this video. Uh, but first, I thought it appropriate to give you a little overview of my background. I served in Vietnam in the 1967 68, rotated back to the States, in Northern California, on active duty. 18 months later, 4 May 1970, I was a sole survivor of 14 passengers in a military plane crash, T-29. I crashed at nine minutes after takeoff at 2,900 feet near Shelton, California. Uh, the story of my rescue, my recovery, my journey has been well documented in several of my books and my speaking engagements around the country for the last 40 years. I spent 89 days in the intensive care unit, 18 months in the Army's Burn Unit in San Antonio, Texas. Medical retired with 100% disability on October 1971. The DAD was the first organization that reached out to me, as I recall, in the, in the stepped out facility at the Burn Unit. I have been a member since 1973. Uh, the DAD helped me get on my feet, if you will, by being the liaison between myself and the Veterans Administration in Topeka, Kansas. That led to cutting through the bureaucracy so that I could complete a double A degree at Johnson County Community College in Kansas. I had already graduated from college and had a BA. So that was my first experience with the disabled American veterans. I read the magazine monthly. I'm aware of what the DAV does, their mission, their vision, and how many other veterans like me and others who haven't been medically retired have benefited from the care and the compassion and the dedication by the National Service Officers and the headquarters of DAV. Recently, my wife and I updated our living will and trust. We both agreed, after doing some soul searching, that one of the two organizations that I wanted to leave, that we wanted to leave, the proceeds from our trust, 50% of the proceeds from our trust with the state of American veterans. They've helped me. Uh, I, I admire and respect the DAV. Uh, my wife and I both came to that conclusion that that would be the best organization for me based on my experience with the DAV to leave the proceeds, the portion of the proceeds of our trust to that organization. If any of you are, in, are thinking about leaving, uh, donating some of your trust, uh, funds in your trust to the DAV, I highly encourage you to give serious consideration to it, like we have, and uh, I think that would be a wise investment to play it forward. Uh, I've had many, many people help me over the years, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and this is one way where I can continue to play for and hopefully help some other veterans uh, who weren't as blessed and as lucky and as fortunate as I was. So thank you for your time. Thank you to the DAV. Uh, and God bless you and God bless America. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, very often we don't get to meet the people who have done this for us. We try to eventually get around the country and meet people to thank them in person. But George is a brand new um, Guardian Society member who informed us of his estate plans. First he asked for the information, probably really just in early June, and then I learned his story. But uh, when I talked on the phone, he's actually gotten choked up about doing this. So as I said, it's often very personal and emotional people, but he's an inspirational speaker too, so hopefully we'll get to meet him in person someday. So when see, people see our ads in the magazine, you know, our postcard is there, and I kind of make sure you open to that page even, 
Um, but uh, we talk to them on the phone. Sometimes we just get those postcards back. But for people who ask about the this, they'll receive this estate giving folder, is really what it is, with a uh, reply board here where they can form us once they get around to it because many, many people, and my husband and I included, we think about redoing our estate plans or will, but don't get around to it for maybe three years. So this is why we made the folder as it is here with a big tab that sticks out in people's files or files so that you'll remember it when you can get around to it. Um, but it tells you all the different ways you can name us. It talks a little bit about gift annuities and has every platform there as well to learn about gift annuities. Um, and I'll be talking about them in a minute. Um, and at the back of it, this is the estate planning, really organizational side. We have really great pages to prompt people to think about everything they have and what anybody might need to know for their final plans, including where your lockbox is, and if you've bought a cemetery plot already, and credit card information, just wherever your bills might be. Um, military records are included, uh, so I need to do this myself. But it's a great thing, and you could even make copies of that for people in your chapter as a service. Uh, and in the back is my card, and I have extra cards if you would like it. Um, so that's what they'll get, along with a nice cover letter that you know, talks about how we want to be sure to know if people do get around to including us in their plans. Um, all right. Um, good. Uh, and then once people inform us that we're in their estate plans, a whole lot of people don't get around to informing us, but again, we just want to make them feel good and we feel better having had the chance to thank them in their lifetime because it's unbelievable the number of people we never ever had a chance to get to know and we could have made them feel so good, and in some cases people are lonely, they'd love us to visit, and we do try to do that. Um, but we try to thank them and honor them right away through a appreciation package that Mark Burgess, our CEO of National Adjutant, sends. Um, so they would receive this Guardian Society Certificate of Appreciation, it comes in a nice folder, uh, signed by Mark Burgess, right now it's signed by our commander too and they get a lapel pin for the Guardian Society. I'm a Guardian Society member myself. And then we have window decals. So these are all things that are in the picture. You probably see it better on the screen there, but we probably send people extras. If it's a married couple, they get two of everything except for the certificate. And on the certificate, you can't see too well, but we love people to personalize their plans. We we have a prompt on our reply forms, you know, including this one where people then tell us where they have this form that they've included us in their plans. We always have a prompt for people to tell us that they would like their uh, recognition to pay honor or mem uh, honor to somebody's memory or to even somebody who's living. And so this is an example of one where Mary L. Smith has done this in memory of her husband, William J. Smith, of course. Um, and then, uh, twice a year, we have a Guardian Society newsletter, and this is on your chairs, too. It's actually our personal philanthropy programs department newsletter, but within it, we honor our new Guardian Society members. This is our newsletter. It also has a reply device where people ask for more things, including over time, because you know, maybe five years from now, somebody will eventually send back this postcard after they've asked for our information. Eventually, X number of people inform us for their plans by way of this newsletter and I'll tear out. Um, this newsletter happens to have testimonials from several different kinds of donors, including a stock donor. This page tells exactly how to become a Guardian Society member and one of the ways we're talking about that it's kind of crystallized uh, down to the three primary ways. Gift annuities, naming us in your will or trust, or by way of the beneficiary designation, the 15-minute estate gift. And then if you turn to page three, this is our uh, list of new Guardian Society members for this particular newsletter, and you'll see in memory of certain people. Um, we love to do that. And, uh, yeah, so it's usually about five or six pages of good information. All right, so uh, the ways, these are the choices for how to name us in your will, at least. That's one of the ways to include the um, 
lot of people will name, is that thunder? Yes. Have you guys ever seen so much rain ever in one place? We were here Saturday, it just rained cats and dogs. I hope you've had enough fun with any good weather. I'm trying to get out of here. Um, all right, so these are the four ways of percentage of your estate, but the top one is a specific dollar amount. A lot of people will name this for a certain dollar amount. Um, a percentage of your estate, and I'll just note at this point that that's easily the nicest thing, the nicest way to go about it, because it's always proportional to what your true intention is. So if you are thinking about naming um, a niece and nephew for 25% each, and a charity for 10, 15, 25, even 50 percent, then at least, and your children, whatever, you, whoever you have in mind, then if you do that in percentage increments, then it keeps up with your intention over time for everybody, um, and it's just the most uh, proportional, smartest way to make sure that your long-term desires are matched by your plan. So. Um, otherwise, just with the depreciation of money over time, you know, your niece and nephew may not get as much as you might have wanted them to either. Um, and you can always name a charity or a family member even as a contingent beneficiary in case the primary people or organizations you have in mind don't outlive you, and that could definitely happen. We have a gift annuity donor lady who just lived to one month shy of 106. When we met her, which is about 90, she was in great shape until the end. So, uh, and then people can also name us uh, as the remainder beneficiary after other requests are met, and whatever is left, they can name us to receive the residual, and that's a really great thing as well. But four ways. And there's a request language, but it's also in your folder. So you have the choice of the dollar amount, ideally the percentage is the smartest thing for you know, any charity's name and any family members or friends. Go back. Yeah. Go back. Yes, go back. Oh. Hey, Jeremy. I didn't realize you were here, too. Jeremy's another brand new guardian side member, as Frank is, so, yeah. Right. All right. I'm going to turn it over to John. One of the things that that better than I do. People that actually uh, have a will or don't have wills. Right. It's a um, huge percentage. Right. Either they're, they're updated or they're invalid. Right. They have to change space to do or Right. Yeah. The, the will goes in the file and then it, that's where it stays forever. And uh, I've seen that happen. Uh, I've had that happen. <laughs> so you always have to be aware of things that are changing because the way it was set up originally isn't always the way it needs to be now. And you want your wishes to be carried out. I mean, that's you know, that's what you want. That's the whole purpose of it. So uh, there are ways that you can update things, that you can refresh things. And one way we found is something called freewill.com. It's a free website. And uh, now, I want to give a pre kind of a disclaimer on this. I'm not encouraging you to have this take the place of your estate attorney or your attorney because you need their assistance. But what I did find was, I did this and I went through it, and it helped me think through things. So if nothing else, it helps you think through things. So, and then you can go to your state attorney and have that done. Because there's all kinds of nuances and, and different things that happen when you're establishing a will uh, that you need to make sure that your attorney is taken care of. But at least there's a way that you start thinking about it. Every state is different. And every state is different. This does keep up with the state regs, but I still don't, encourage you to use this solely. You need to get your attorney. But there are things out there that can help you thinking, start thinking. And I encourage you to do that because things do change over the years. And so I just want to bring this up. Uh, there is even a way on this site to go in and to say, I do want to leave DAV as one of my beneficiaries for a percentage or an amount, just like Judy had mentioned. And again, it just gets you thinking. You need to take everything with you to your attorney. But it, it does get you thinking, and it, it will actually this website will actually notify us, Judy or I, that you that's one of your wishes. So that's a good way to let us know. But you can just pick up the phone as well. But I want to let you know there are things out there like this, and you all probably have some uh, resources like that that you found too. Just be careful, but it's a good way to get things, uh, to think through things. Like I said, 
There's a high percentage of people that have it loaded that's outdated. There's a high percentage of people that don't have a world at all. Um, and this might just be a good way to kind of jumpstart things. So we just wanted to bring it up. So this is what we, actually I was at a conference and they referred to this as the five minute estate gift, such an easy way to name a charity is by way of beneficiary designations, but the average person who tries to go to a website to find the form, or if you call to ask for the form, that will, ever, I figure it takes at least 15 minutes, at least for anybody my age, and I'm 60. Uh, Jeremy in the crowd here has done this, Jeremy in the front row, and he told me, yeah, it took me two minutes, but that was after we found the right form on the website. <laughs> oh well. But um, all of these assets typically pass by beneficiary designations. Bank or checking accounts, those are often noted in the uh, will, but, but typically, especially the other assets, are typically passed <clears throat> but outside of the will or trust because of the beneficiary designations. And usually it trumps what might be in the will, so it's important to know what you said in each place and look at it periodically and update. You know, your beneficiaries could have passed away included. But those are easy ways to think about naming any charity, even your church and your estate plans, without having to update your will necessarily. Um, and so many assets, you know, working people my age and older and younger people, of course, but so many um, assets that people have didn't quite exist or weren't popular until the 80s. A lot of these instruments came in in the 70s but didn't really become commonplace until the 80s. So in the old days, people would only talk about naming charity and their will. Um, but increasingly, so many things pass outside of your will, as I mentioned, uh, that over time, it's thought that the will will only be the backup plan for a lot of people. Um, my mom has almost everything set up to pass by beneficiary, beneficiary designations, and my father, who already died, did as well. And so for anybody who's thinking about naming a charity or their church and their estate plans, uh, if you're thinking that way already, you want to think about the smartest things to give, or at least to consider giving, and retirement assets that are left to a non-spouse, at least, are more heavily taxed. Um, and instead, if you name a charity for any percentage or possibly the entire asset, the beauty of that is the charity will benefit from the full amount um, versus if it had been left to a, a non-spouse, uh, income taxes are due, et cetera, and it depletes the gift, and you might as well leave other assets to those family members or friends if you're already thinking about being charitable. Um, always talk with a financial advisor or uh, financial or tax advisor. We're not attorneys or tax advisors. We're Ordinary people, I'm just trying to get the word out. Um, and again, so many people have to hear a message many times, and get many newsletters before they get around to informing us or getting around to, to actually putting us in their state plans. But we understand that it's a slow drip drip. Um, but charities who have been doing this forever and hiring staff accordingly are seeing you know even larger. Uh, benefits of estate giving. Uh, the Salvation Army is the charity I love to quote. Starting in the 50s, they started using the request income then to hire planned giving officers. And the last I knew, eight or 10 years ago, they already had 100 people just in that area, who therefore are in every state of the country. We're still new to this. Um, okay, so now we're going to transition to other ways people can give in their lifetimes. We'll not spend much time at all on the simple things I'll tell you about at the end, but the first way I'll mention, it's an estate gift in effect because we'll benefit after that person's lifetime, but uh, gift annuities, you'll see in the magazine at least twice a year, it's a way to give to a favorite charity. Most major charities have a gift annuity program, um, but 
it's a way to give a larger gift, usually a minimum for any charity is 10,000 or more. A lot of charities might even have a 25,000 minimum, but ours is 10. Um, so you can give through a gift to do any program. And then what happens is uh, we have a set of rates that are advised by a national board that advises charities on what rates are safe to offer so that the charity can be sure it can meet its obligation to the donor to give them fixed payments for as long as they live and that if they're married, the payments can continue to a survivor. And the rates are far higher than what people can typically get from fixed investments, so they like gift annuities for that. They're not a financial instrument, so we never want people to think that. Um, if you are an AARP member and you read their newsletters, you'll see advertisements for New York Life annuities. Those are commercial annuities that always have higher rates, but annuities are a way to receive fixed income, fixed payments for your life. Um, but there's many kinds of commercial annuities. These are gift annuities that will benefit a charity after the donor passes away. Um, so those fixed payments uh, are largely tax-free because the donor's own principal gradually trickles back to them through the payments for X number of years. Um, and they can be funded by cash. Most people write as checks, but if people have appreciated stocks, that's a great thing to give because a big chunk of the capital gains is erased by doing a gift annuity, and then the rest of the capital gains is gradually spread out through the payments. So I hope I'm not gonna make you glaze over because I'm trying to be fast on this because they can be a little confusing, but they're really pretty simple. The charity manages it. We have a bank that makes the payments for us. They give it to us, that gives income for life for one or two people. And then at the end, whatever is left from what the donor originally gave us, then that goes towards veteran programs. Um, and it's always a big help. We've had this program since 1995, and it's a really long time for us. We have a large number of people, a very large pool of donors, which makes it all the safer. But we hold what people have given us in a separate reserve fund that's not touched for any reason other than to make the payments. There's a little bit of a graph that makes any sense. People give to us, and then it creates a gift annuity, the blue block there. We have a two-page legally binding contract we send to the donors so that they have something you know, that guarantees to them that we will make those payments for life and to their spouse if they're married. Um, and then from that point on, the donor receives payments either monthly or quarterly. If they want, they can have them once a year. Um, fixed payments, and then the arrow to the right there shows an effect after the life cycle, the round life cycle, then the remainder goes to the DV Charitable Service Trust. Uh, so what we usually send people is a $10,000 illustration of benefits. Um, and before I forget, in this newsletter here, you can always tear out the reply card and it always has a place for you to give your date of birth and if you're married, your spouse's date of birth um, and send that in. Or you can leave it with me today and we'll send the package out a little quicker. But this gives you an idea of the rates, the payout rate. The older you are, the better the rate. Um, these rates are went up for the first time in, not that long ago, for the first time in seven years. So the rates in the folder are actually a little tiny bit updated. They've gone up since then. Um, so now the highest rate is 9.5%. Uh, so now you can see what that translates to for payments per year. So for that nine-year-old, $950 in payments. And then we would divide that by 12 or four if they wanted you know, monthly versus quarterly payments. And then the next column shows what ratio of the income is tax-free. So the older you are, the greater that portion of tax-free income that it is and that people can also claim a one-time charitable deduction. Fewer people can itemize these days, but a lot of people will, will cluster, try to load up their gifts in one year so they can itemize every other year. That's a new thing for people. And two life rates are usually, you know, give or take about a percentage lower. So per 10,000, about $100 less per year. We definitely have people who've given us 100 to 200,000 over time. A lot of people do repeat gift annuities. We had man, one man who did 1.6 million in gift annuities over time. So, 
All right. Uh, so that other ways people can give in their lifetime, gifts to take planning that are more than just a simple writing a check. Um, so many people have stocks and mutual funds and don't realize that that's the smartest tax-wise way to give because the charity when it receives those assets uh, because we don't pay income tax and affect the charity's tax exempt, we benefit from that full amount of the asset. We want to give stocks or mutual funds held at least a year and appreciate it. Um, but it needs to be transferred to the charity. We send people, talk to people, and give them information. We don't publish it on our website. Um, it's safe enough to put out account numbers and all of that. But it's another great way to maximize your gift, and then it saves you the capital gains from having sold the appreciated stock. But I always remember an article in our Cincinnati Inquirer uh, newspaper saying that even wealthy people don't realize they can and should be doing that. So. You don't want to do it for small gift amounts, but usually at least a thousand dollars and up you know, makes it more worthwhile for you to go through the process of asking how to do it, etc. Um, and then the new thing, um, as of four or five years ago, the IRS uh, now made this a permanent law. So for people who have IRAs, and once you get to be 70 and a half, you have to take your uh, minimum required distribution. Um, that's you know, taxable income for people. Um, and a lot of people don't want to increase their taxable income for a lot of reasons. Uh, and so that's another great way people can give to us. You know, we benefit by the war, it helps them tax-wise. And um, some, I, I think the read that it can help with your Medicare premiums, you know, because I guess it's a little bit based on your income too, so many reasons. Um, the IRS doesn't allow you to deduct those gifts because they would otherwise consider that double dipping on tax benefits, but... So we're winding down, yay! Uh, okay, so I guess we're already at the end, but um, this is our contact information. Um, I'm the primary contact for estate gifts and gift annuities, and usually we have at least two people in the office. We have a person, Pam Tester, who answers calls to, and we're going to hire another person yet this year. Um, and there's our toll-free number, and our general email address is that, but I have my personal email address there. If you have somebody who might be interested in making larger gifts during their lifetime, that's more something for John's team of people who work out in the field. So that's his contact information at the top. And then on our website, if you go to that exact website, that's part of our website, but rather than go through all the you know, navigation tools within our website, that's the direct navigation. And then from there, you can see more lengthy articles and you can even run your own gift annuity illustrations if you want to be private about what you're thinking about. And then again, my cards in the back of the folder. But okay, you've been very polite and you held all the questions. But um, can people uh, think of any questions they have? I actually have a probate attorney from Chris. But, yeah. Uh -huh. Good question. Um, I'm Bruce McDonald, Jack Fourteen.
opposed to all those things, but the majority of our outgoing uh, funding is <coughs> service program, which is our oldest and largest program in the need that we're found about earlier. Do you have a part two question on that? No, I So did you hear that, everybody? I tried to. Um, the request language in the estate planning folder, at the end of that language, it, it gives you an opportunity to designate your gift to just one thing. So you could say, for example, the transportation network. Um, it's, it's best to ideally name one of our primary programs that will always be there. Um, it can be hard for us to manage certain things like wheelchairs, you know, something where we don't exactly even do that sort of thing, but sometimes people will name things so specific that we don't exactly even necessarily do. So ideally, we prefer people make it general, but you can definitely designate an existing program that's important for us. Um, so, yeah, more questions? Okay, thanks. Yeah, go ahead, I don't know your name, but thanks. Yeah. I'm Alan Bode, Chapter 18, Miss Longford, Georgia. Um, is your final report presentation available uh, online? Um, <coughs> not so far. Will, will, will this be on the We can probably yeah. either make it available or we can yeah. send it to you. Yeah. I'm sure we can work that out. Yeah, sure. for sure. If you're just getting it, we can add it. Yeah, for sure. You just uh, email me, or it could be your card if you have one. Yeah, thank you for asking. This will, be on YouTube. this will be on YouTube. This will also. be on YouTube within the next couple of days, possibly tonight. But oh. Let's check out the oh, YouTube. Oh, YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Just put it on the DAV channel. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. Wow. I hope I didn't bubble too much. <laughs> My uh, next question uh, if uh, we wanted to leave something to our local channel, uh -huh. uh, does DAV have something set up to where we wanted a percentage of what, whatever we request to? National, that it could also be uh, trickled on down to the to your local chapter. Um, in general, um, people when they're giving to the national, it stays with the national. But if you were to ask by way of your book list language for it to benefit your chapter, we can accommodate that for sure. But otherwise, you could use that similar language if you have somebody within your chapter that you want to talk to for gifts on your chapter level. Um, the national DAV has all the programs you know, and it depends perhaps on the size of the donor's gift on the chapter level, and whether you have programs that can support that to make really good use of it. Um, but definitely it's a great thing for chapters too, the size of the chapters, especially who have defined programs. But. sophisticated man who 
assessed our database and said that we had 1.7 million good to excellent bequest prospects. We have so many people who have given for 25 years or more of those small gifts and people like that are perfect to at least hear the message and think about it. estate plans, if they're not well laid out, it's, it, it brings a family together or potentially tears a family apart. And we all know probably within even our own families cases where that has happened. So um, most people want to know for sure by the time you have a child, so they appoint a guardian inside your, your estate plan. Um, but as people you might have had included in your will or other estate plan, as they pass away, that's one reason to to update if you move states you want to if you just start thinking about a trust instead of a will we didn't talk about trust but that and that are especially popular on the west coast and they largely help you avoid probate plus assets pass really quickly after you die do you have any other helpful thoughts for being a probate attorney in the room yeah don't <laughs> make it Question to the AV. Make make it clear what, what your intent is, so you, you don't so your executor isn't start scratching their head. You know <laughs> that does really it. Yeah. Okay, just make sure what your intent is clear. That is clear. It and causes fewer problems on the back end. And if you have a question about anything, just call us. I mean, we're we're there to help. We're really who we're just who you are. I think you know as you know DAV leaders. It's, everybody's just in this together. And so we just have to be you know, stewards of this part of the organization. But just give us a call. We'd, be, we'd love to talk to you more about it. Uh, if you have a question about how, just even that, just give us a call. Even, it, complex, simple, we'll try to the best we can to answer and point in the right direction. Uh, we're just here to, to carry the message and to, to encourage you to consider this for this great organization because uh, we know the mission. You're already part of the family. Just the fact that you're here, anybody who's involved with TV, it's, it's big help to be a member, just even that. But the, the very fact that you're here and you're involved on the chapter and department level, I've thanked a lot of people this week for what I assume is you know, giving DV their near lives by being this involved. So you're making a huge difference in everything else you do. And this is another step if it's right for you. And if not, you can be you know, potentially an ambassador within your chapter. And one more thing too, uh, I keep thinking of things you need to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah. But it, when we're ambassadors of things, if you'll notice in the, the magazine and the, the uh, newsletter that you have, some people will step up and say, you know, I'll, I'll tell my, I'll give my testimony as to why this is important to me. And so I'd encourage you, if you're going to do this, you have done this for DAV, allow us to tell your story because your story is like somebody else's out there. And with a million people that see this magazine every time it's published. I mean, it's millions of times somebody's going to see this. Somebody might hear your story and say, you know what, I can do that. And so that's how it's going to happen, too. So that helps in your ambassadorship to, for this uh, for this, uh, this issue. Uh, allow us to tell your story. And everybody's got a story. And, uh, and they're inspirational and they're heartfelt. And that's what this is all about. Uh, you know, I, there's something I just, I, I just love this quote. It says the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you don't expect to sit. And I think that's what this is all about. We're planting trees where shade's going to shade somebody else in the future. And if we don't do it, the future's not going to be there. So, as G said, there's so many in this organization that could be doing this. Uh, what a difference that could make because we're going to unfortunately have to continue to exist as there are wars of people that are fighting for our freedom on yourselves or injured. So we want to be there for them, and uh, and even better than what it is now. So, so 
Thank you guys for coming. Appreciate your time.